What's going on smart people? This video is all about math. More specifically, if you choose to do a physics degree, what math classes are in your future? So today I'm going to talk about every math class I've taken formally in a classroom setting. And keep in mind that I also have a math minor, which means I took a few more classes than a physics major has to take, but not as much as a math major has to take. So if I mention a class that a physics major has to take, that'll be in green right here. And if I talk about one that I had to take to satisfy my math minor, that'll be in red here. And so that I never have to hear you say, oh my god, when are we ever going to use this? I'm going to show you what physics classes I think are mostly associated with that specific math class. That way when you're in the math class, you can look forward in your future, think of the physics class, and be like, I'm going to use the shit out of this math in that class. Now I'm going to be kicking things off with Calc 1. Why? Because calculus is calculus with analytic geometry, which means you got the trigonometry down, you got the geometry down, you're not making this mistake anymore. So let's, let's use that as a jumping off point. You've got that down. Calc 1 is pretty much all about motivating calculus. What is a limit? What is a derivative? Sort of what is an integral towards the end? Calc 2 is all about integration. Now I'm not going to bother trying to tether these to certain physics problems or physics classes because frankly, Calc 1 and Calc 2 are used in every single one of them every single day. Screw it. Here's a couple examples. In physics, sometimes to describe physical phenomena, you run into 1 over zeros, which means that functions that describe these physical phenomena, while well, they might not always be continuous, which means it's really helpful to describe their limits. Okay? Okay? And then for certain physical phenomena, you can express them in terms of how other things change. Therefore, you need derivatives. If you go one direction towards the derivative, well, it'd be nice if you can go back to the other thing. Therefore, you need integrals. Everyone on the same page here? But Calc 1 and Calc 2 are pretty much just single variable calculus, but we live in exactly more than one dimension. So any branch of physics that says, hmm, well, what if we're not actually stick figures, which is actually still two-dimensional, but shh. Well, then you need multivariable calculus or Calc 3. A physics class that uses the hell out of multivariable calculus is electrodynamics. For example, you learn that it's much easier to draw a triangle instead of draw what the triangle stands for. But in all seriousness, in electrodynamics you have these objects that might have spherical symmetry or cylindrical symmetry, conic symmetry, and there's going to be different ways to exploit those symmetries in different ways. Multivariable calculus is a great way to uh, expedite this process. Moving on, differential equations, things change. Sometimes those changing things change. If you have the thing that's changing and the thing that's not changing in an equation that describes them both, what must the original thing be? Because of the implicit relationship between things like force, acceleration, velocity, and position, anything that expresses these quantities is just begging to be expressed as a differential equation. This makes it so that the physics class that I think most naturally lends itself to differential equations is classical mechanics. Now, ordinary differential equations is single variable, but much like Calc 1 and Calc 2 has a big brother, Calc 3, so does ODEs, which we will get into shortly. Now let's move on to linear algebra. Vector spaces, determinants, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, linear transformations. This is the least intuitive class. I think that this is by far the most abstract math course for physics majors. However, it is one of the most powerful classes. It's the reason you can express a second order differential equation like this as this. Remember, quantum operators are linear transformations. Never forget that. Linear algebra can be very abstract at first because right now your only experience is with coordinate spaces. But once you build up the familiarity with different vector spaces, you'll see how it more readily applies to things like quantum mechanics. Moving on to partial differential equations. Ordinary differential equations is single variable. Partial differential equations is multivariable. Maxwell's equations, the Schrodinger equation, Laplace slash Poisson's equation, these are all partial differential equations. And these are all partial differential equations you will learn to solve in their respective physics classes. In my opinion, partial differential equations is a great class for the future, but it's not necessary for an undergraduate physics degree. I think it's easy to solve these types of partial differential equations without having a formal course in them. With that being said, like I said, it will still be helpful in the future. Now, if you watch this video again in the future after you've taken these physics classes, what I'm getting at is that when you're given these differential equations to solve in your physics classes, they'll usually be separable, or, well, it's a good thing these mathematicians did a great job solving the difficult differential equations so that we can just borrow their solutions when we're done, or when they're done, and take their special functions or whatever they are and apply it to our physics problem. Meaning there will be a point in your physics class where you'll come across a differential equation, your professor will say that is Bessel's differential equation, the solution is the Bessel function, and then you'll move on, which is a little bit of a cop-out, which is why I'm glad I took a course in partial differential equations, that way I know how to arrive at the solutions myself. Now the last class that I'm going to talk about is real analysis, which is a course in how to write formal proofs. Now the course that I took is not the end-all course in proof writing. What I took is, is an introduction to things like 
uh, proof by induction, uh, epsilon delta proofs, things like that. This is a course that was probably the most difficult one for me and it was also the one that I used the least throughout my physics career. I think in my computational physics one class I recognized that certain steps reminded me of proof by induction and that might have actually been it. I think I might have actually solved a certain proof in one class voluntarily by using a certain proof that I learned in, uh, in real analysis, but other than that, I really didn't use that class very much. Or rather, I didn't use what I learned in that class very much, but I'm sure that it'll, it might help in the future. But those were the formal math classes that I took throughout my undergrad. There are other classes that you could take instead, like things like complex analysis I'm sure would be very beneficial, but I just never took the course. And there are also courses and, and branches of math that I learned throughout things like internships and other physics classes, but still weren't technically a formal course in them, which is why I'm not talking about them here. But that is going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments section if you took any different classes or if you have any questions about the ones that I brought up, and I'll see you guys there.